welcome back to Stuff We Do, where we do all the knife stuff you love. Knife reviews, knife tests, knife modifications, and outdoor stuff with knives. Today, we are responding to an open tag from the EDC Den. The EDC Den, yes. Um, I will add him to my list of channels in the description. Please go check him out and subscribe. Okay, he had a very interesting tag. It was... Um, what knife started all of this? Because if you like knives, you most likely like more than one knife. Okay, you can never have enough. Um, so the tag. Which knife started it all? Okay, initially... Oh, sorry, I make notes on my hands about things I should not forget. And then because we sanitize 700,000 times a day, it looks like this. And then eventually I forget everything. Um, anyway, my knife journey started out like most typical kids. The first knives I can remember carrying was one of these things that you screw open at the back and it had matches and a fake um, saw and fish hooks and things in there. Um, mine had a black handle with a Rambo, whatever, and I think it was marketed as a Rambo survival knife. Anyway, so I can remember running around with that thing. And then something like this. A big ukapi, the ratcheting type, but it had a red plastic handle. Okay. Um, yeah, many good times played with those things, ran around in the bush for years on end. Okay, so... Those were the first two that got me into knives. Okay. Um, most of my knives up to then were things that I got from grandparents and things like that. So olden day sh slip joints and little things. Okay. So this stuff opened up a whole new world to me. Now all of a sudden we can chop down, I don't know, not really trees, but at least branches and things like that and whatever. So great fun. Okay. So... Those were the stuff that got me loving knives. Okay. Um, then, look at this little thing. It's not, well, this is one of them, but I had lots and lots of these little knives. Okay. Um, I'm going to lie to you if I say where it comes from, but let me just see if I can show you what it says there. It says something like Sandrick with a little flower. So I suppose that's some or other Chinese thing, I don't know, or maybe Indian, I don't know. And at the back it says, I don't know, it looks like, I don't know, it's not Slovenia, it might be, I don't know what it says. Anyway, um, so these little things, I should have actually researched this beforehand, Ned, that would have been the clever thing to do. Anyway. Um, you could buy these things back then at gas stations and at all small shops and things like that. Um, today, I don't know why, but they don't sell knives anywhere anymore unless you're at like a sporting goods store or a designated knife store. But mostly online. There's like two or three actual knife stores that I know of here in South Africa. I'm lying. Maybe five. But anyway, not a lot anymore. And it's not readily available. Anyway, these things were inexpensive enough so that a kid could buy it. So even anywhere or everywhere or whenever you went anywhere, we would buy these things. This is like a little piece of plastic under a little piece of plastic and then a little picture under a little piece of plastic. Um, but the one thing I like about this is it's an extremely solid lockup, which is quite great for a little slip joint. The knife perpetually has a little divot right there because whenever you close it and the bail is in the way, it would catch it right there. Okay. Um, extremely good lockup on this thing. Half stop. So the walk and talk on this thing, that's, I don't know, maybe 30 years old, is still fantastic. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so this was pretty much the next evolution, the first knives I started buying myself. Okay, then um, I bought this thing one day at a, uh, what do you call it, a butchery, super mirror, DW and the pivots, 
Um, this is stained um, horn, a normal cattle or yeah, whatever horn from a normal yeah, cattle, cows. Anyway, <coughs> sorry about the itchy throat. Okay, it's got a hollow grind, but a very high hollow grind. And then it only says that DW on there. Now, if you go back and you watch the review video on this thing, it is from Duplessis Werke, people that make these knives. And this thing got me into custom knives because as soon as I bought this little lockback, um, I thought, but this is fantastic. Look at what you're getting for the money. And at this stage, I still believe that if you're going to spend $100 or 2000 rand, rather spend it on a custom than on a production knife. Okay, I have been cheating on that one a lot, but beautiful little knife. Okay, <clears throat> so this was the first one that got me into buying South African custom knives. Okay, and then because um, the virus came and it gave us all wonderful lockdown time, after I finished, well, I don't know, sorting out my garage, doing home improvements actually we couldn't even buy stuff to do home improvements during our lockdown so yeah did what we could with what we had that's partly the reason why i sorted out the whole garage labeled everything called a bucket of nuts nuts things like that um then i decided great stuff i'm going to start a youtube youtube channel okay and so far it's been going great love it yeah give me something to do <coughs> excuse me again it will be better hopefully okay um and then i want to show you the first knife that i actually bought for this channel because all the other knives i bought previously and i've always loved knives and i've always bought knives and things like that and i like a mix old things new things yeah all types of knives anything that you can cut something with makes me happy um, craft knives, utility knives, I don't know why I love this stuff so much, but they've, yeah, I love it. Anyway, so this was the first knife that I actually bought to show people on the channel. And I must say, it looks like a little novelty knife, but it is quite an awesome little thing. Okay, this is the Gerber Tri-Tip, it's 7CR17, I think, if I can remember correctly, with aluminum scales. And it's a small little thing, but it is super fun. Okay, so this thing is still nice. I don't know why the ants are eating me again. I suppose it's because it's autumn here in South Africa. So we are heading towards winter and maybe the ants are very hungry before they go to sleep. I don't know. Anyway, fantastic little knife, beautiful stone wash. I love this little thing. Um, it's still great fun to pull out at a braai and to cut up whatever. Most likely just the packaging to get your meat out. But still, it's wonderful. Um, even the little sheath is quite fabulous. Okay, this is a made in China um, Gerber. But it's a wonderful little thing. Okay, so this was the first one I actually bought exclusively for the knife channel. And that is my journey of knives that got me... I can't say to where I am today, but this is the way it progressed. It started off with big impractical things that we played with in the felt and that we survived with. I wish I had one of those olden day Rambo survival knives. I'm going to start looking for one of those because I think I must make a video on one of those. Um, anyway, played with those things. Fantastic. My first custom knife that I bought, and I didn't even know it was a custom when I bought the thing. And then my first, well, not this one specifically. I also bought this one when I was small, but I had a lot. I remember at one stage I had these things lying around everywhere. Okay, so, yeah, little slip joints like this that you could find everywhere and anywhere. Today I would love to get a few of these new. Okay, um, the EDC then, thank you very much. Just thinking about this today made me extremely happy. Stay safe, happy, and have a good one. Goodbye.